<laughs> Hi, my name is Angelique Lavoie and today we're going to be talking about the dashboard and I felt like showing you the entire behind the scenes so just follow me as I have my iPad out here and then we just go it out it really is that accessible okay so let's get started I'm right now here in the Adobe IO website so I'm just going to log in credentials are very easy but I'm not going to show it to you guys <laughs> so here we have our dashboard for streaming but I want to make sure though that you're actually in the streaming dashboard so if I don't know, for some whatever reason, it actually started in the communications and media tab. Just tap into streaming and you can switch back into it. And so today I'm going to focus mainly on the live broadcast, the stream token, and some of the settings behind creating tokens and how to make them more advanced if you wanted to. So obviously I'm going to go here in order to create one of them. In my case, I don't know. I feel like calling it December. Voila. Now, the first thing that we're actually going to see is I will record broadcast. This would mean that if I actually want to keep a record of that stream, then I could just enable it. And why not? I feel like I want to keep it enabled. The other thing is our secure viewer. So anybody who has a link to your stream can actually see the streaming. But if you enable this, it would actually give you a code. So the person not only would need the link, but would need to access that code into it. So this can be for more like private viewings in this case. Now the temporary token, you can activate it and it actually allows it to self destruct and whether it be like 24 hour, a week or a month, whatever preference you want. In this case, I don't want to enable it. It's all good. But from here we have our advanced settings. And so this is where things get a lot more interesting. We start off with our cluster region, which is one of my favorite because depending on where your audience is at, we actually have different servers that can tailor to them. So we have one in Amsterdam, San Francisco and Singapore. So why not for the heck of it? I'm just going to go for Singapore. So that means that actually when I start the stream, it goes from here to the Singapore server and then from the Singapore server and back and showcase it to me. And it's just really fun to actually see like the real time um, latency and just really test it out but you can do whatever you want. If you don't set it up to anything, it just automatically routes itself to be San Francisco. Now the geo blocking is if you wanted to allow certain countries or deny certain countries, if you don't select anything, it just allows all the countries. And then the multi-source, I just want to keep it disabled. Why not? So I'm going to click OK and then voila, we have December plus a typo um, <laughs> enabled. If I click on it, it actually allows me to see my token settings. And so if I wanted to, I don't know, allow the token to be required now or disable it, same thing with recording or changing the names, this is where I would go. Now, if I click on my API tab, this is where most of you might find it more interesting. The stream name and the publishing token and like all the API URLs I provided to you, even just a uh, player embedded if you wanted to put it on your website per se. And then lastly here, the recordings tab would actually show me after the stream finished with a few, uh, like oh, a few minutes until like the video fully processed, it would show the archive of all these videos here. But I'm going to go back into my token details and click broadcast. And I'm going to talk about the iconography that goes on in the bottom. And so here, this is actually where I can switch off depending on what camera I have. In my case, I have only two cameras, the front camera and the back camera as it detects it from the device. But if I wanted no camera, then I can turn it off. I could also do a video test and this would allow me to like really sync it in, just see how is it going or not. But I'm going to stop that now. And then I kept my front camera as the main one, right? Now I can go into the um, video devices and select the type of microphone per se, or just mute it. Down here, I have my star stream. And then since this is red, it actually is telling me that once I click on it, it's actually going to be recording, but see recording right here. But if I disable it, it's only live. It's not recording anymore. But if I click on it again, there's a new recording that's going to start and it's actually going to start um, recording again. So I'm going to stop it here and go into my toggle for media settings. The media settings here are where, I don't know, if you like video technology, this is where it gets interesting. We have different types of codec, bandwidth, and stream types. For the codec, it automatically defaults to H.264, but depending on the device that you're also streaming it from, it could give you more accessibility. So I think on the computer, it's like five. I'm on the iPad, so it's only giving me three, like VPA, VP9. I could also go into bandwidth 
and I can customize it or just select one of the pre-selected one. And then for the stream type, it actually is if I wanted the combination of both, if I wanted the video only or the audio only, which depending on your use case can be really important. Lastly, down here, I have like my aspect ratio and the frame rate. If I had a better camera, then I would go into 24 because it's the true cinematic. Um, or if I wanted to do a live stream of slow motion, then I put it to 120. I don't know, whatever fits your boat. So I'm gonna update it here and I'm gonna start my stream because in order for me to see my media stats, you need to do that. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Here you can see uh, right now it's currently running at 175 milliseconds but I've seen that number be like 30 milliseconds, even going from our San Francisco, like, well, our Singapore um, server, which will tell me from the cluster. And then we have the codec, we have the video bit rate, the audio bit rate, the resolution, the frame rates that is being calculated right now, whatever it is, right? Then lastly from here, what is important is just the sharing button. So you can just give this link to anybody. And if it's not secure, then anybody that has that link can actually view your stream and then go from there. But I'm gonna close this out and go through one last thing, which means that if I click here, this is how actually you delete your token. And then voila, we're done. Um, I hope you guys join for next time. I'm gonna talk about like analytics and webhooks, which might be something that you guys might find interesting. So until next time.